GarageBand here on the iPhone or the iPad has certainly improved over time to the point where we now have some great plugins, EQ and effects that we can add to our tracks. But there's one thing that's still missing and that is the ability to have a separate effects track that we can control independent from the original sound. So in this video, I'm going to show you a little hack that's going to help you do exactly that. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. And if like me, you love using GarageBand, then there's plenty of videos here on the channel all about how to get the best out of your GarageBand project. So consider subscribing. In this one, we're taking a look at effects, but unlike the standard way to add effects, which is right here on the track, what we wanna do is find a way to actually create a separate effects track so that we can control things like our delay or our reverb independent of the original track. Now this can be useful when you want to get some really precise control over some of your effects and your timings of your effects, or maybe you want to put an effect on just a part of a track, not the entire track. This is great for vocals. So without any further ado, let's jump in down here to GarageBand and take a look. So here we have the project of my recent song called Hold On. If we hit play, it sounds like this. Life is long and you have much time. You're in a and I've used a bunch of different effects in here. So if you want to learn more about the effects here in GarageBand, there's another video linked up the top at the end of this one and in the description so you can learn the basics of applying effects. But assuming that you know that here we have our little mixer icon here, then we have our plugins and EQ, and we can add in a bunch of different effects. We can tap the edit button there and we can change, we can shift effects in and out, and then we can actually change the settings of each of these effects that have settings by tapping a little drop down there and changing all of the different parameters. Now that's great because we've got control over it on that track, but what if we wanna do something like add a delay or an echo that is independent, that we don't want right on this track or we don't want it on every single part of the track? Well, that's where this tip's gonna come in. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually duplicate this track. So this is predicated on you having enough tracks to be able to create an additional track. So we're gonna tap right here on the actual microphone icon. Now don't try and tap out here or out here, when we're doing track-based things, it needs to be right on the microphone. We'll tap on that one and we'll tap duplicate. Now, duplicating in GarageBand doesn't duplicate the audio. It only duplicates the track settings. If we want to then copy the audio, that's no problem. We can then select all of this audio and then paste it down into here, which we will do in another step in this. But for now, let's just show you how we can set this a new track up to be just an effects track. So let's come in here, we'll solo this vocal track here and we'll solo this second track. Now, if we go into our second track, we'll just tap on it there and go to our mixer icon here in the top left and go to plugins and EQ. Now, we've got all of our plugins and EQ on here already. So at the moment, this track is gonna act exactly the same as this track. So there's gonna be no difference between this one and this one. So what I wanna do though, is I wanna make this just 100% an effect track. And I could do that by adding in an effect at the bottom of my channel here. So what I'm going to do is we'll tap on the edit here and we need to remove one to get this done. So we'll remove the effect EQ for instance because it doesn't really do a whole lot of anything. And then I'm just going to grab this one and I'm going to also going to hit done first like so. And then when I hit edit I can actually add back in another effect. So the effect that I'm going to add in here is going to be a track echo effect. So we'll put the track echo on there like so. I'm gonna hit edit again and just move this right to the bottom of our chain. It's just a good habit to get into because what I wanna do is I want it to be the last effect that the, that the actual sound goes through and you'll see why in just a minute. So we've got it dialed in here. It is a repeat of 41%, like we don't need to worry about this right now. We can change all of this, but the important thing is, is this dry wet slider. So if we drop this dry slider down to 0%, this now means that none of the original signal will be played. So it's processing all of the original signal, but it's not gonna play it back. Then what we can do is we can dial the wet up, you guessed it, to 100%. So now this track has all of the same settings as this original track, with the exception being that we've added this track echo, we've removed everything else, so there's no dry signal coming through. It's just pushing all of these effects into the echo or the delay effect here, and that's what it's gonna be playing back. It'll make a lot more sense when we actually add some audio and show you how this works. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to highlight. So we're gonna tap outside of all of this audio, 
scroll across it or, or drag across it, tap anywhere in there, tap again and hit copy. And now what we can do is we can come to our new track and we do have to line it up just at the right spot here at the start to make sure that it goes in the right spot. Tap on the new track, tap again, hit paste. So now we've got an exact replica of our original track, but it is only going to play back our delay. So let's take a listen to the difference between these. So here's the original track, the original vocal track soloed. It sounds like this. Life is long and you have much time. You're in a rush and you don't. And let's listen to our delay track, which is just going to be our quarter note at the moment, our quarter note echo. Don't know why you want it all and you want it now, but you doubt your talent and you don't. So that's all cool, yeah. So you can hear that it's got the delay on that one. It doesn't have it on this one. So yes, what we can now do is we can bring these together. And if we hit play on both of them together. Don't know, don't know why. why you want you it want all and you want, and you want, want it now. It now. And it sounds like a, a wet, hot mess of garbage. But what we can actually do is let's firstly turn the automation off on this one because we need to have some control over the volume. So we'll just drop the automation off of that one. And if you want to learn about automation, there's another video linked up the top and in the description. So what we can do is we can now dial in however much of this echo that we actually want on here. So let's hit play again and we'll dial this down to the level that we may want it. You doubt your talent and you don't know how. Look around at what others do. Think it's easy, so why not you? And that's it. It's as simple as that. Now, you may be saying here, Pete, you know what? I could just do this right here in the plugin. Let's just grab my mouse so you can see where I'm tapping. I can do this right back here in the plugin. I can go into something like reverb. I can dial in the dry and wet, and I can use those sliders to determine how much of the signal I'm getting in there. And that is true, but for the next tip, it's going to require this second track. So let's show you what I'm talking about now. So we touched on automation just a moment ago, and one of the challenges here in GarageBand is while we can automate our volume, we can't automate an effect. So if we want to say bring an effect in to a track and then take it out again, there's no way to do any sort of busing or sending or receiving or automation of effects. Once you put an effect on a track, it's on the track. So what do we do? Well, we use a second track as an effects track, and then we can actually put it on just parts of a track by editing what we have. So let's show you what I mean now. Now you can use this for reverb or delay or a bunch of different effects. As long as the effect has a wet, dry dial in there, even third party effects, you can use this same method to do that. But let's zoom in here now, because what I want to do is one of the classic uses of especially a delay, and it's uh, used a lot in sort of old school sort of punk music and that sort of thing, is you want, might want to delay on just the last word. So let's just play this uh, opening part again with the delay on everything and take a listen to this. Life is so what you don't want during the during the chorus or sorry during the verse you don't want that sort of delay stepping on the original audio you want it maybe just on the last phrase or the last word so this is where this can come in super handy so all we need to do is zoom on in here and find the last word so i think it's this one just down here i think this is where we go time Time. Yeah, so we don't want the ch time, we just want the time. So what we can do is zoom all the way in here, and then this is the beauty part. We can just really carefully find the spot that we need there. We can tap on that, we can tap again, we can tap split, we can slide that little splitter down there, and then we can just delete out all this audio at the start. Because we've still got our original audio playing all the way through, then we don't have to worry about anything to do with that. This is just gonna be the delay that we have. So let's come in here now, and we'll just do it this one time. So we'll just put it there, and we'll split again, we'll tap, we'll split, we'll slide down, and then we'll tap on this one, and we'll just delete the rest of it. You obviously wouldn't do this. You'd keep the rest of that so that you can then go and do a bunch of other things if you wanted to do this, say, on the end of every word or every second word or maybe just the end of your chorus or the, the last word of your vocals of your verse. So let's now see what this sounds like with this phrase now that we've got the delay on just the last word. Life is long and you have much time. time. You're in a rush and you... So it's okay, except the problem is we now want to play with it. And this is where it gets really handy is that now we can come into the settings here and we're only working on this one track. We're just doing the echo here. And what you could do is you could EQ it differently. 
which is something that I might do. So I might only want the delay to be sort of more in the treble zone here. So we could drop down a bunch of the mids and the lows and then even boost up the treble. So even to give us a little different sound. And again, we can sample what just that delay is going to sound like by, Time. by playing it there. So that's really cool. And then we, what we can do is we can come in. Whoop, we're losing out. My mouse is going everywhere. Um, we can come in here and we can change this. So if we didn't want this to be a quarter note delay, we wanted it to be, say, a half note delay, we can once again get complete control over this. Uh, where did my track go? There it is. Um, I'm scrolling around using my fingers and the mouse here. It's, it's super handy using the mouse in the GarageBand and on the iPad, but it can get a little bit unruly sometimes. So let's take a listen to this now with, say, a half note delay. It would sound like this. Time. Time. So, yeah, and, and again, if we want the repeat to be, say, higher or lower, like let's just put some ridiculous amounts of repeat on here and play this one. Time, 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 time. Uh, and you might be wondering, why is it not playing when it hits the first part of the note? Well, that's because, again, remember, it's only playing the wet signal. It's not playing that original dry signal. So it won't play the first note. It's only playing the delays or the echoes that we have on there. You can even change the color here. So again, if we want it to be a little bit brighter and have a little bit more repeat there, we can... Time, time. So let's go with that. We might just want, we've cut off the start of the word. And again, we can just come in here and just give it a little bit of extra like that, just so that we can make sure that we get the t part of the time in the repeats. And then finally, actually, let's go back to quarter note because that's the one I wanted, the time, time, time. So quarter note delay. And then we'll come back to here and we can drop the volume down of just that track, mix it to taste. Now let's just bring these two tracks back together and see what it's sounding like now. And you have much time. You're in a rush. Okay, so I've got the ch ch there now. So I do actually need to have it a little bit further along. So we'll just put it to there and try it again. Again, trial and error experiment. It you can be super fun. You have much time. You're in a rush and you don't know. Yeah, that's cool. Too much repeat though, so we can drop down the repeat and we'll be good to go. So let's bring this back into our mix and see what it sounds like with this little subtle uh, but interesting echo just on that last word. And you have much time. You're in a rush and you don't there you go. I think that sounds pretty cool. And I think you can see the possibilities that you're going to have using this method. Just having your individual vocal track, it means that you don't play around with your vocal. You're not going to mess anything up if you've got a nice vocal mix there. But once you've got your mix and you want to add in some of these secondary effects on just part of your track, or you just want to add a little bit of flavor and have complete control over it, then this is a great way by just duplicating that track out and then adding your effects, your delay, your reverb, whatever you want to your second track. Track. Once again, if you want to learn more about effects here in GarageBand, check out the two videos right down the bottom now. You can also subscribe by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right corner, and I'll see you on the next video.